This is um, financial statement analysis. We're just going to give you a brief introduction uh, of this. It's an entire course that I've, I've taught at the graduate level. Uh, and, and you're for, for intermediate accounting for accountants. The purpose is to help you understand how your product will be used to make some decision. Um, let's take a look. What we do is um, we're going to take advantage of all of the available financial information, that is financial statements and other public data that's out there. Scour the web, industry data, analyst reports, competitor financial statements, bond ratings, beta factors. Beta is, by the way, how, um, how much relative to, change, to a change in the overall market. Um, how much is the, um, does the change in this particular stock change relative to the overall market? That is, if the overall market goes up 1%, this one might go up 2%. That would have a beta of 2 um, at, it essentially magnifies the effect of, the, of a market increase and a market decrease in security prices. Um, and so you consider all of this data that's out there and we're going to, number one, take a look at the strategy that the company is, is using. If you, you should understand that strategy, what management says that they're using to try to make a profit and then you should be able to look at those financial statements and see that they are um, employing that strategy. If they say they're doing one thing, but it's not showing up in the financial statements, they've had time to do it, then you start to question that, uh, that company's management. The second thing is we're going to look at accounting analysis. And these are the strategy analysis and the accounting analysis. We're not going to spend much time on those things. Those are, in the accounting analysis, it's how valid are these financial statements for helping, for telling the truth about the underlying financial statements, uh, the financial condition of the company and results of its operations. It's really difficult uh, in this particular class to make that assessment. You can do it uh, with a little bit more work in the financial statement analysis course, um, but we're going to bypass the accounting analysis, that is, understanding how well those financial statements rec uh, reflect underlying uh, economic conditions. Right now, you're just learning in intermediate accounting how to do the accounting, not so much how good is it, uh, and that's what accounting analysis is about. The third part that we're just touching on today is financial analysis where we're going to dig into ratios to help us understand um, how well does this company stack up compared to the prior year and compared to other companies in the same industry. And then if you're going to do a valuation, which is typically um, how we do financial um, statement analysis, we come up with an estimated value of that firm. We use a prospective analysis, and we're not going to spend any time on prospective analysis here. Suffice to say that we're going to forecast the future complete financial statements for the next for, uh, foreseeable future, 10 to 15 years typically. And then we're going to discount that back at the appropriate discount rate, which is um, the cost of equity capital. Um, and um, you can use a WAC approach also if, you, if you're looking at the ROA, but we're going to focus on the equity only. Um, and then we're going to make a decision. And it's important to understand what kind of decision we would make. Some of the options are uh, buy or sell stock, I mean, lend or, or um, foreclose or demand payment uh, and if you're a lender. Um, making decisions about how much is the company worth in, in a merger, merger or acquisition settings. And the IPO analysis, would, again, that's also about how much is the company worth. So a lot of these decisions in the IPO is whether to um, go public or if you are 
a, an investment banker like Goldman Sachs, you'd like to know how much is the company worth so you can tell the owners of the private company, this is how much we'll give you for these shares. So next, we talked a little bit about this. Uh, uh, you need to identify what is the what is the general strategy of the company? Is it to have a high markup and lots of product differentiation? I would say, look at, at Apple, for example. They tend to be more of a high value product differentiation compared to um, most of the um, sort of off-brand Windows uh, computer manufacturers. Um, they tend to rely on R&D and advertising product promotion to convince customers of the superiority of the product. On the other hand, there's low costs. If you've got some strategic advantage, how you can deliver the product more cost, cost lower by lowering costs, typically in the distribution channel or, or manufacturing setting, that can make you a, a cost leader. And for those companies, you expect to have low cost but and low profit margin, but you just do it a lot. With the high value or product differentiation comp companies, they don't need to do it quite so much because they have a high profit per sale. So ratio analysis, um, what we're trying to do is look at the, at the company from different perspectives, all looking specifically at, at here at financial statements, at the financial numbers. Um, and we can look at profitability, which is things like gross margin, as a, or gross margin percentage, uh, profit margin percentage, uh, those are good examples of profitability. Return on assets can also work, although that's kind of a combination of profitability and um, efficiency. So I, I probably would back off and say, don't use return on assets. Use something off of purely off of the income statement. Uh, net income or operating income divided by sales or gross profit divided by sales. In efficiency, we tend to use turnover ratios. Um, that is sales divided by something. Sales divided by total assets is the overall assets of the company. How fast are they turning over? Sales divided by accounts receivable is how fast are we collecting the accounts receivable. Sales divided by inventory is how fast are we turning over the inventory. Sales divided by property, plant, and equipment. How efficient are those, the property, plant, and equipment producing sales? Um, how, how much are they able to produce more sales? Um, so that's efficiency. Their turnover ratios. Next, we're going to talk about long-term solvency. That is your ability to pay bills over the longer term. Um, Long-term solvency typically is uh, total debt divided by total equity, which is stockholders' equity. The long-term solvency could be debt to total assets. Uh, those are the ability to pay the bills in the long term. And, and in the short term, we call it liquidity or short-term solvency. There we look at things like the current ratio, which is current assets, the current liabilities. And notice by using ratios, we're able to um, make companies that are vastly different in size comparable. Um, current ratio, the quick, quick ratio, uh, which is typically current assets minus inventory uh, divided by um, current liabilities. And is it a good buy? Um, there we're gonna use some price metrics. You need to look at the current price of the stock if you're looking at equity um, and compare that to something. You can compare it to the book value of equity, that is stockholders equity on the, on the balance sheet, or you can compare it to earnings per share. I prefer book value of equity if possible although sometimes you run into that negative denominator, which makes it impossible to do. And then we have to, um, 
that you can also do price earnings ratio. The price earnings ratio is where we take the, the price of the stock divided by the earnings per share. That also has a negative, um, it can have a very small earnings per share, which create, it creates a sort of out of whack um, extreme ratio. So you can also have, and if you have negative earnings, you have a loss, then you, you really can't de determine it. So these are the, the five broad areas that you can look at with ratios. There's plenty of others as well, but the, I'd say these are the, the five general ones that we typically look at. And you can measure those in different ways. Notice that there's no correct way to measure any specific ratio. Uh, ratio is only one of many clues to performance. Um, it, it tells you what the accountant said in terms of how much you, how well you performed. Um, but if uh, there may be other ways, and you can get those other ways by by doing some web sleuthing and reading the, um, you can look at sustainability reports. You can look at quality comparisons between products. Um, you can look at customer satisfaction uh, rates uh, from from consumer sat consumer reports analyses. There's lots of different external ways to uh, evaluate a company's performance. Um, also, when we look at the financial statements, the income statement and the balance sheet, we should be looking at um, what we believe would have been reported without the without management playing games with it. We know from prior research that managers do play games with the financial statements because they know they're, they're being evaluated based on those financial statements. Finally, the important thing to remember is that ratios are good for identifying questions, but they rarely identify answers. We're looking, after all, at one single number or two single numbers and comparing them in a ratio where we're leaving out all of the footnotes and all of the other information that's available out there to simplify it. So those are the, the ratios sort of that measure different aspects and we, we talked about them, you know, you could use profit margin and asset turnover and debt to total assets and current ratio and price to book or something like that. Those are, those are a few of the ones. Uh, that some people use. Uh, there's no correct way to do it, and ratios are good for identifying questions. Next, I want to dig into something called return on equity analysis. And here, we, we look at uh, average stockholders' equity, that is beginning equity plus ending equity divided by two, that's total stockholders' equity off of the balance sheet. And we're going to say, how much did we earn net income divided by stockholders' equity? How much did these stockholders have invested inside the company? And this measures how much the firm earned for each dollar of stockholder investments within the firm. And that leads us to this kind of equation here. Return on equity is net income divided by stockholders' equity. And remember, anything that's on the balance sheet, we use average. That is the beginning plus the ending balance in stockholders' equity divided by two. Notice that the profit margin, that's all on the income statement. Net income divided by sales. And then asset turnover is sales divided by assets. And leverage is assets divided by equity. And so these are telling us about, number one, profitability. Number two, efficiency. And number three, financing. And we can put those, we can take this net income divided by equity and break it out by doing net income divided by sales times a ratio that is sales divided by assets 
times the ratio that is assets divided by equity. Well, if you put those out together, you will have net income divided by sales and sales divided by assets. We can cancel out the sales because that's a denominator here multiplied by a numerator over here. Those two cancel each other out. And assets in the denominator and assets in the numerator over here cancel each other out. And what you're left over with is net income divided by equity. One other point. Wherever we have a balance sheet number, for example, total assets or equity, stockholders' equity, we use the average of the beginning and ending balances of, for example, total assets. Or if we're looking over here, we do it for both total assets and for stockholders' equity. And that gives us the most appropriate measure of how to value uh, uh, of how to uh, how well this company is is using stockholders money that they in, that stockholders invested now as we said earlier you can measure profitability pro gross margin operating margin some people even look at tax expense although that kind of pretty heavy on the sort of out there derivative we can look at Efficiency, we can measure how efficient we are in turning over accounts receivable and inventory and property, plant, and equipment. We want higher rates on those three. In payables, we want to do that really slow if possible, um, but don't get in trouble. Don't be, you know, don't get to the point where you're, you're paying interest and penalties because you're too slow. And these are, sorry, these two, when you multiply net income divided by sales and sales times sales divided by total assets, then we can cancel out sales here and we end up with net income divided by assets, which is return on assets. That part, return on assets, is a combination of profitability and efficiency. Net income divided by sales is profitability. Sales divided by assets is efficiency. Over here is a little bit different breakout. Same, same thing, except that I'm going to point out it's the same exact uh, content. The financial leverage is assets divided by equity and that has nothing to do with our operations. It has to do with how management provides the data or the, provides the money that come management, how sort of the higher level management provides the lower level management with the funds that they need to operate the company. And that is the financial leverage. Things like solvency and liquidity analysis, debt to equity, times interest earned, and current ratio are examples of looking at the balance sheet, which is where this is focused. This one was all on the income statement, profit margin. This one is all on the balance sheet, which is how do they get the money for man the operating managers to do their job. And that's looking at these different, uh, so solvency, that would be like debt to total assets, Current liquidity would be current ratio, quick ratio, and so forth. Okay, so let's practice a little bit with this. What I'm going to do is just show you the results of comparing discount toys over a three-year uh, three period. And we discount toys has sales, net income, average total assets, and average stockholders' equity. Remember, to get average total assets, you would take total assets at the end of year two plus total assets at the end of year three, add them together, and divide by two. And that's what I did here to get 8178. Same thing here and same thing here. So what we can see here is that this company lost money in year one because they had a, a, a negative profit margin. 
once you have a negative profit margin, as long as these two are positive, and they typically are, that is, we're tur our asset turnover and use of other people's money, then we essentially are magnifying that loss, where it was really only 1.2 cents per dollar of sales, it becomes 3.3 cents per dollar of stockholders' equity because of not only do we have a, neg a negative net profit margin, but we did it 1.4 times during the year. And we magnified that because we're using other people's money and that has a risk effect, which is the higher the financial leverage, the more we have that other people's money and we have to pay it back at stated amounts. So year two is a better situation. We got a, a positive profit margin. Now we're magnifying that by the asset turnover, our efficiency measure. And then we magnify it by 2.22 because we're using other people's money. And we could, because of the efficiency of doing, doing the profit margin almost 1.5 times during the year, the annual profit margin 1.5 times during the year, we get up to somewhere around 3.6, 3 points uh, or so percent. And then we multiply that by 2.2, which is the use of other people's money. And that combination gets our return on equity up to 7.6%. Year three looks even better because now we've increased the profit margin. We decreased the asset turnover. And typically the, these work in opposite directions. So that we increase profit margin, it's reasonable to see that we actually decreased asset turnover, but um, it doesn't always happen that way, but it makes sense. And then we multiply it by the use of other people's money and we get a high ROE, return on equity. So this is the effect of profit margin, operating efficiency, and OPM, other people's money, to magnify the 3.6% profit margin to become 11.4% return on equity. Okay, let's take a look at this one more time. In financial statement analysis, we're gonna use all of this outside information, financial statements, plus everything else that we can find on the web or with you, your firm, or um, the WSU library has access to all of these, this other information. We're going to understand how management thinks it's going to make a buck. And typically that's either by having a high profit margin or a low profit margin and doing it a lot. And then we're going to look at the, the accounting analysis, which is how well do these financial statements tell the truth about the company financially. And then the financial analysis, once we've figured out what we believe to be the closest to the truth, we can apply the financial analysis. And then we can understand what makes this company end up the way it does on paper. And finally, we do prospective analysis. If we want to do a valuation, we forecast the future cash flows, discount them back. Focus is on a decision. We don't want to go through all of this unless somebody's going to try to make a decision, a buy or sell, foreclose or not type of decision. Finally, let's re recap. Uh, it, it's important to remember that financial statement analysis is an art. And it's not rules like most, the rest of the semester has been rules. There's no gap here. Uh, the, the goal is to help you understand uh, why uh, how your financial statements that you produce are being used by decision makers. So the, the aim here is to help, is for accounting information to help make a financial decision. We use ratios, one, to understand the company, how it works, is it consist, are the, is the company doing what management says they're doing in terms of strategy? Can test that by looking at the financial statements. And number two, 
we can ask questions about the financial statements, about management. We can ask lots of questions if we've understood those financial ratios. That's all I have.